Well, Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Chicago anymore. No, I am most certainly not in Chicago anymore. The sun is out, the air is dry, it is warm, and it is beautiful. Welcome to aptly named Canyon, Texas, where I will be giving a parish mission this week on what else than the beauty of creation, the majesty and intelligence of what God created, and most of all, why God chose to become a part of it himself. Most of us probably have a pretty good answer for the second question. The reason that Jesus came, the reason that he became a part of creation, was to save us. We sinned and needed redemption. Essentially, God created what was perfect in the Garden of Eden. We ruined it through our sin, and so Jesus came to bring us back, to restore what we had lost. And in one sense, this is absolutely true, right? We did sin. We did need redemption. Jesus' death and resurrection offers us salvation, and so it's easy to think that the reason that Jesus came was for our redemption. And yet, when we think about it, we realize that it doesn't really offer us an answer to the first question. We still don't know why we were created, and it offers us a somewhat unsettling answer to the second question. Are we really saying that the only reason for the Incarnation was redemption? In other words, had we not have sinned, Jesus would have never come. For me, this answer just ain't cutting it. What God wants from us more than anything else is to know and love Him, to be in communion with Him. How could we say that we knew and loved him if he never revealed himself to us? How could we go on in his entire existence not knowing that there's a second and third person of the Trinity? I cannot think that the only reason for the Incarnation is redemption. There must be another answer. For me, the answer is this. The entire reason for the Incarnation, the whole reason that God became a part of creation, was so that God could share God's self with something else and include that something into the love of the Trinity. Even before Adam and Eve had sinned, even before all of creation came into being, the primary reason for the Incarnation, what God's ultimate plan was, was to share God's self with something else. In other words, the Incarnation is not a reaction to creation, but the other way around. We and everything in creation is a reaction to God's desire to share God's self with something else. From the beginning of time, God wanted to reveal, God wanted to love, God wanted to include something else into God's self, and so he created us. Regardless of whether or not Adam and Eve had sinned, if we would have stayed in the garden in perfect union forever, we would have still needed Jesus to come, to be a part of creation, so that we could be a part of God. And so, am I saying that Jesus didn't come for the redemption of sins? Of course not. We have sinned and need redemption, and so therefore his incarnation brings the redemption that we need. But what I am saying is that it was not the primary cause of the Incarnation, that even if we hadn't have sinned, Jesus would have still come. Why? To reveal the Father to us, to reveal Himself, reveal the Holy Spirit, to give us the Holy Spirit so that we might be in communion with Him. Even if we wouldn't have sinned, the Incarnation would have still happened because there would have still been a need to be in full communion with God. And I think it's with this perspective that we can return to our original two questions and give a much more satisfying answer. Why does God create anything? Why did God decide to be a part of his creation? Well, I think we have those questions backwards. God desired the incarnation first, and so therefore willed creation. The only reason that we exist, the very essence of our being, is so that we could be in relationship with Jesus, that we could love our God. We are created for the incarnation, and in that way, we are created in the image not only of God, but of Christ, the firstborn of creation. And what it does is offer us a different perspective on salvation history and essentially the story of creation. Because rather than telling a story in which God created what was perfect, we ruined it with our sinfulness and so Jesus had to come to redeem us, to get back what was lost. Essentially a story of how we are sinful and useless. What this story tells is one in which God created what was good but ultimately incomplete. That he had to continue to reveal and grow and create because what the ultimate goal was was the Incarnation. That was the purpose of all. That was the lens in which everything was looked through. And that is why we were created. It is the Incarnation that gives us our purpose and what we are called to be, what we were meant to be. 
we were called to live as an image of Christ in our world. That is why God created us, it's why God created everything, and it is why we have the incarnation, because God loved us. If you ask me, that is a pretty amazing story of creation.